In today's tutorial, I'm going to be demonstrating how I reach out skin only using dodge and burn. There are two different dodge and burn techniques, local and global. Local happens on a micro level and targets specific areas of the skin, whereas global manipulates and sculpts larger areas. Our main goal with this technique is to manipulate the skin in a non-destructive way to preserve texture while creating a smooth transition from light to dark. I want to mention that typically, prior to this technique, you would do any major skin cleanup first, like blemishes, etc. To begin, we are going to set up our layers. We will start off by going to the Adjustments panel and clicking on Curves. Once open, click in the middle of the line and drag up for Dodge. Now we go down here to rename the layer, double click, click on the actual layer, press Command I on the Mac to invert and Control I on the PC. Now we go back to the adjustments panel and click on curves once more. This time click in the middle and drag down for burn, about halfway. Rename the layer and click Command I to invert on Mac and Control I to invert on PC. Now select both layers and drag them down to the folder icon to make a grouping. Rename the grouping Dodge and Burn. And drag down to darken the image slightly. Now we will select both of these layers and drag down to the folder icon to make a grouping. Rename the folder to Visual Aid. Now we will toggle this on and off just to show you. The last step before we begin is to set up our brush tool. We will begin by clicking on the paintbrush and making sure the color white is selected. Then we will go up to Opacity and Flow. We will set Opacity at 100% and Flow at 1%. As for the hardness of the brush, I like to have that somewhere on the lower end, right about here. And you can change this as you go throughout. I will go over to my Dodge and Burn folder and click on Dodge. I like to start off by zooming out and doing Global Dodge and Burn first. The reason I zoom out is because I'm able to see the overall picture. My brush size will be the same size as the area that I am painting. Using gentle strokes, I will now lighten the darker areas. To quickly change your brush size, hold down Control Option and move your mouse to the left and right. As I'm moving around the image, I'm continuously looking for the darker areas that need brightened up to create that smooth transition. At first, it might be difficult to know exactly what you're looking for, but as you make strokes throughout the image, you will start seeing the effect it's taking. A few strokes in and I feel like my brush is a little bit too strong, so I will go up to opacity and take that down to about 80%. If you go too far, or if the stroke you make is too bright, you can undo the effect by pressing Command-Z, or since we are working on a mask, you can switch to a black brush and paint over the bright area to essentially erase it.
Here's the toggle of the before and after of just the dodge layer. It may have not felt like we did much, but as you can see, we've made some noticeable changes. Once I feel pretty good about dodging, I will move on to burning. This time I will darken the lighter areas. I will begin by clicking on my burn layer. Here's the before and after of the burn layer. And here's what it looks like when I toggle the entire grouping. And here's what it looks like when we get rid of the visual aid so we can see it in color. Now that I am done with global dodge and burn, I will zoom in and begin the local dodge and burn portion. For this segment, I will move around the image, painting light on dark areas and dark on light areas to create a smooth transition. My brush size will be changing depending on what area I am targeting. I will be zooming in and out as necessary and switching between dodge and burn as I do this. I will begin on the dodge layer. Changing my brush size according to the area that I'm targeting. Here I am going over the lighter areas to take down the exposure and create less of a contrast look. While doing the micro portion of this, I'm looking for lines in the skin or any areas that look blotchy and uneven. I will now go over to the burn layer to do the dark, darken portion. Once I feel pretty good about this, I will now toggle off and on the entire grouping to see my progress. The next thing I would like to do is focus on the finishing details. Since dodge and burn is a layering process, I will now duplicate dodge and burn by clicking on the grouping and pressing Command J on the Mac or Control J on the PC. I will reset the layers by clicking on each of them and pressing Shift Delete to fill them in with black. I'll rename this to Dodge and Burn 2. If you toggle this on and off, you should see no difference, which means your layers are cleared and you are now good to go. Just like before, I will be switching between Dodge and Burn to fix the areas I am working on. I will now begin. Remember to check your brush settings as you go.
While working on this, especially on the lips, it's going to be a little easier for me to see if I toggle off the darkened curves layer that we made earlier. Zooming in and out is important to check your work every once in a while. Toggle on and off. And as you can see, we've really targeted some of those finer areas. Now that I'm done with the finishing touches, the last thing I want to do is do a global dodge and burn to sculpt the face. Click on the dodge and layer grouping, press Command J to duplicate on Mac, and Control J on PC. Click on each layer, press Shift Delete to fill in with black. Rename this grouping, Dodge and Burn Global. Toggle on and off. And it's clean and ready to go. And now we will zoom out, begin the global Dodge and Burn process. I will be switching between these two layers as I go. For this, I want to be Darkening the darker areas and lightening the lighter areas. Once I feel pretty good about that, I will toggle on and off my layer grouping to see the differences. The last thing we will do is enhance the skin and add depth. We will do this by going to the adjustments layer and clicking on black and white. Then we will go to the blending mode and change it to soft light. Once the blending mode has been changed, now we can move our sliders. The left and right see the differences in the skin. I'm going to play with this until I get it to an area that I like. Feel good right there. So now what I'm going to do is invert the black and white layer by pressing Command I on the Mac or Control I on the PC. I will select a white brush. I will adjust my brush settings to a stronger brush, and with a big large brush, I will paint in the effect on the areas that I would like. But for this, I only wanted to target the skin, therefore I will only paint on her face. You can now toggle this on and off to see the effect. If you feel that it is too strong, you can click on the layer and change the fill. I feel pretty good about it right there. This concludes the demonstration. Now I will show you a before and after. I'm going to toggle each layer on and off to show you the difference. Now I will add 
add the visual aid. To see a complete before and after, I'm going to merge these layers and flatten them by pressing Command Option Shift E. I'm going to hide all of these. This method is also able to be used on the eyes, lips, hair. It goes beyond just beauty retouching as well. It can go into other forms of photography. Use it on automobiles, interiors. Still life it can be used on anything where shadow and light needs to be molded. I hope it was easy to follow. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please share and subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email. Thanks again.